Santa Claus bound with Jesus, which is the one we react to with Pascal Young. That is today, we should not want to react to food. The difference between the Bible and the Quran. Why am I to that? That I get some clarification, so I ask for help, guys. Guys, right? let's go straight into that. Yesterday, you proved that the Bible was not the Word of God. How could you now quote the Bible to predict the coming of Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Please explain. Yesterday was a debate. A format had been laid out. Originally, it was 50 minutes, 60 minutes, and 10. Both sides had 60-60. But the format was, whoever speaks first has 10 minutes at the end. Because every advantage has a disadvantage. So both speakers speak 60 minutes each. Now, with that format, you have no time to explain each and every position. So what is the Bible? So what do we consider the Bible to be? As a whole, per se, we say this is not the book of God. And I proved it. According to all reasoning, according to the book itself, the internal evidence that Moses didn't write the books attributed to him, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the books attributed to them, not only is it not the book of God, but it's not even the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You're talking about 24,000 manuscripts, I challenge you, there's no two are identical. So you've got 24,000 different Gospels. Which one? You just pick, took a pick that suited you, you accepted it. Who authorized you? Council of Nisi. They said, we take this, we take that, we take that. All the Gospels that are now accepted were not accepted at one time. It's now pick and choose what suits you, you accept it. That's what you have done. And you say, now it's the Word of God. But now the Word of God is in it, in the book. The Word of God is in the book. The Word of the Prophet is in the book. The Word of the Historian is in the book. And pornography is in the book. Now I have to explain all that to you. I said, you see, I give you examples about the Word of God. Like in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the verse I quoted in Arabic? The same thing is in the Bible. Almost an identical idea is there. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So who is this I? God. He's speaking to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That I will raise them up, a prophet, from among their brethren. From among the Bani Ismail. The Bani Israel are being addressed, is that from among your brethren. Like unto thee, like you, like Musa. And he will, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he says, this I is God. You don't have to be a theologian or a DD or an evangelist. Anybody will tell you on the plain reading of it that these are not the words of Moses, these are the words of God. Another quotation from the book of Isaiah, as if God is speaking, and God is speaking. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's that? Isaiah? No. No Jew says that Isaiah claimed divinity. They would have killed him if he did. No, he's speaking on behalf of God. God is speaking through him like a mouthpiece. This is the job of a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He hears the words of God and he conveys them to you. So, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Who? God. God is talking. This is the word of God. You don't have to be a professor of theology to see that. There is another type of evidence in the Bible. See, now, if it was a lecture, I would have been, done all this last night. But this is a debate. So whatever the man is throwing at you, you can't start grappling with everything. The caravan is moving, and the dogs start barking. You don't start the caravan moving back to chase the dogs. You've got to move on. You've got to do your job and get, get on with it and finish your job. There was no occasion for explaining all these things to you. You see? Then there is the prof word of the prophet of God. Example, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, 
that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus is talking. The word of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. Words of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible. First was, as if God speaking. Second was, as if a prophet was speaking. Third, what does the historian, how does he speak? He says, in the Gospel of St. Mark, so while he, talking about Jesus, in bracket I put Jesus, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon. But when he, Jesus, came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's writing? An eyewitness or a your witness, not God and not Jesus. So you see, another type of evidence. Word of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian. And there was that other type of thing I was suggesting, and I lost $100. You remember, if you were there, I lost $100. I wanted Brother Swaggart, you know, to read a certain chapter from the book, from the Bible. And he ignored it at first, maybe he had no time, and somebody from the audience prodded him again. He says, you know, look, what about that chapter Ezekiel? And there was $100 also involved, so he read it. But he read it at 60, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so one of your university students, while I'm sitting there, he comes to me. He said, look, he read, but uh, I didn't know. Uh, so what was the joke? I said, look, one thing is, you are at a disadvantage. You are an Arab from Arab country. You don't know English too well, number one. Number two, that the English that he was using were, was archaic, old-fashioned, from the King James Version. You see, we had given him that pamphlet, which was in, from the new international version, modern language, where you call a spade a spade. But he was reading from that archaic Bible. I can't blame him for that, because he uses that. King James, he read it. And you don't know English too well. That's also a disadvantage. And he was reading at that speed I told you just now. So these are all the facts. I said, look, what you do, you go and read it, you know, in that pamphlet, and you see what he was reading. So he read it. You know, bulk of the people, I'm sure, they didn't catch the joke. You know, the speed, his pronunciation. He was not as emphatic when he quotes other biblical verses. You know, he makes every word and phrase to go down your throat or down your ears. But here was something different, 60 miles an hour. So, so <laughs> There is that type of thing, which I said, no decent man can read it to his mother, sister, daughter, or even his fiancée if she's a good woman. Now, what you have to do is you have to go and read it yourself to know what was read. You didn't catch the joke. It's no fault of mine. You see, you don't understand English too well, and then, you know, the speed, and the archaic language, all these things were factors where you don't catch the joke. But if you catch the joke, then, you know, something that no decent man can read in his church or to his family, right? So this is it. There's another type of evidence. So we have the word of God in the Bible. There is the word of the prophet in the Bible. There's the word of the historian, an eyewitness or your witness in the Bible. And there is that other type which we say pornography in the Bible. Now, we also have such a thing in Islam. We have the word of God in the Quran. Only Allah's kalam. He doesn't tell you stories. We know an incident in the life of the Prophet wasallam that a Christian deputation had come from Najran in Medina. These were Arab Christians. They had heard that another Arab, he is claiming that he's in communication with the Almighty. He's a prophet. So he said, let's go and cross-examine him. Let us go and see what he knows. So they came to Medina, and they were housed in the Masjid the Nabawi. They ate there, they slept there, and they had a dialogue there for three days and perhaps three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam he offered the masjid to these Christians to offer their prayers. He was so broad-minded, not like us. See, some of us we are, you know, we think our masjids are superior to the Masjid the Nabawi that our Nabi had. No doubt in construction, yes. 
he allowed them, gave them permission to make their prayers. So during the course of this discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. Say, so, all right, now tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't fumble. You know, well, you see, it's like this and like that. No, he doesn't do that. He is the God of Abraham, Moses, and David, and Solomon, you know, who spoke to Abraham. No, he doesn't talk like that. See, when the question is posed, what is your concept of God? So the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as if he was pressing his spiritual buttons, trying to contact Filawhim Mahfuz, the head computer. So, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard that. There were no buttons to press. I said, as if, I hope you people understand that. Then when I go away, don't create a controversy. He said, Muhammad pressed buttons. You know, he had a computer. I said, as if, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Comes the answer through him. Qul, say, huwallahu ahad. He is Allah, the one and only. Allah, samad, God, the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakun lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. And you see, this is our concept of God. Now you see, it's on a different level. He is made to say, Qul, say. He's asking, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But comes the answer, say. It doesn't fit into normal speech. They are asking, what is your concept of God? So you don't tell him, say. Somebody asks you, what is 12 times 12? What do you say? 144. Am I right? 6 times 6? 36. You don't say, say 36. Say 144. Do you say like that? No. Why say? Because the words are being put through his mouth. From fi lawham mahfuz. From the preserved tablet. From the head computer. See? He's in contact. He's got that machine. Spiritual buttons. Ya bari ta'ala. He's communicating. What shall I say? He says, say. Hu Allahu ahad. Now, that I say. Look, all these things that I told you is not in the Quran. In the Quran, you open Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, you start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say is Allah the one and only. Allahu samad. God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakullahu kufu wa ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. That's all. Where he was. What was the occasion? What, how did it come about? Nothing. So only the word of God. Everything else were the details given to us later on. They said, look, this is what happened. People who were eyewitnesses, your witnesses, what's happening. What our Nabi said, what happened. All that put together is our knowledge. You find the other de details in the books of Hadith. Words of the Prophet, separate volume. Allah's Kalam, separate volume. Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. History, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Rush, Ibn Taymiyyah. Great writers, great writers, separate books, separate books. And our Arabian Nights, also separate books. <laughs> yes? You know the Arabian Nights? You know, fairy tales, those filthy, dirty stories were circulating around the campfire. You know, the Arabs also had something to pass time with. You know, pre-Islam, before Islam, and even maybe after Islam. You know, under Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, we don't know how the empire developed. And they were wanting to pass time, you know, somehow, light-heartedness, <laughs> jokes, filthy, dirty stories. You stole around the campfire, right? They're written now in books. Fitzgerald, he translated it, The Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition. I read it and I enjoyed it very much. I was a young boy. Oh, I loved it, you know. <laughs> the unexpurgated editions. But it's separate. It's not in the Quran. It's not in the works of the sayings of the prophet. It's not in the works of a historian. Separate book. So we have the words of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian, and pornography all in separate compartments. They have it all in one volume. I will say, like, what do you think of this? Well, you know, many from this religion, they have a lot of misconceptions about this religion. He has said a lot, a lot of things. One thing we should understand is there's a dealing of the spirit. There's a dealing 
of religion and there's a dealing with life. They claim the Bible is not the word of God. I, I want to speak to adults in mind, not really children. Adults. So you should be able to bear this if you uh you have read the scriptures or maybe probably you have also read some some things about the um, Quran and you are eager to know the truth. The word Bible is not a spiritual word. It is not a word that came from heaven or even the word itself Bible is not mentioned in the, in the Bible. So it's just an English word gotten from a uh, 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 Latin word for Bible. Are you getting it? So it means a combination of other little books. Before now, it was called little books. Before it, English changed it to the word Bible. So the word Bible does not mean the word of God. It is the scripture that is the word of God. What is the scripture? The scripture is the written ways. The Bible is a combination of little books. What are the little books we have in the, uh, in, uh, in the Bible there? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the scripture. Now, in that same scripture, we have the Logos and we have the Rema. The Logos is those letters that you can read. But the Rema is the spirit, the action behind that word. Most of us, we just we, we read this, the, 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 the scripture or the Bible, as we could say. We read the Bible, but we don't get the proper understanding. Why? Because we are not getting the rema. When you read the word, you are expected to understand the rema behind it, not just the logos. Because First Corinthians said, the logos kill it. So you can read this Bible and, and, and harm yourself. Yeah. He said, but the rema, the spirit behind it, give it what? Life. Who is that Rema? That Rema is God himself. That is Jesus himself. He said, I've come to give you life and have it more abundantly. I come to John 10, verse 10. Now, he's talking about what Moses said in Deuteronomy. Yes, you're very right. God told Moses, he said, I will send the prophets among you that we do this and do that. Yes. But another part you should understand, Jesus came as a prophet. He is the word of God. He is the first apostle. He is the bread of life. He is the faithful witness. So there are different dimensions he came to accomplish. He just picked one of it as a prophet. In Luke chapter 1, when Jesus prophesied about um, Nathaniel, when he was guiding his apostles, he told that when the Philip met Nathaniel, he said, we have met the Messiah that was prophesied in Isaiah. Nathaniel said, can any good thing come from Nazareth? He told him, Philip told him, come and see. So when he met Jesus, Jesus uh, immediately he met Jesus, Jesus told him, oh, what a good Nazarene. A man without guilt, without fault. And he's like, wow, this should be the Messiah. Then he said, I saw you under a fig tree. That was a big prophecy. Yeah. Then Nathaniel was like, how? How did you see me? Then he said, oh, for you to believe this, I said this about you, you will see greater things. Now, Nathaniel has confirmed he is a prophet. Yeah. Even Peter, after Jesus died and resurrected, Peter in Acts chapter three, when he, uh, Acts chapter two, when he was talking to the uh, congregants and the the word, let me use the word the word, the people that um, uh, the apostles were seeing now, they are not drunk. Yeah. So he was telling them, the Jesus that you people crucified, who was a prophet, indeed and a miracle among you, brought this his spirit to us. That what we are seeing now is. The manifestation of the spirit. So Peter mm-hmm. himself also testified that he was a prophet. Now John was a man sent from God. John chapter 1. He said, I am not the Messiah. He said, but I am sent to prepare the way of the Messiah. Mm-hmm. So he came to prepare the way for the light, not for the prophet. Yeah. You see the different parts. For the light, not for the prophet. He said, the light cometh. He said, darkness could not comprehend it. Yeah. So Jesus has different dimensions. He came to fulfill on earth. He said, I am, I, I am sent to, uh, to fulfill the law, not to destroy the law. Yeah. There's another place Jesus said, he said, I have come to serve the father against the son, the mother against the daughter, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Now, if you read one 
part of it, you'll say like, ah, Jesus came for violence. No. He's telling you there are different activities he's doing. Just the same way you are human. Yeah. Your flesh desires physical things. But your spirit has a different desire. Yes. So you will not say because your flesh desires physical things, well, the desire of your, of your, of your spirit, is, 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 you, you nullify it. No. There are different things you need to do. Just the same way you don't have one body. Yes. Other people believe, no, what, no, what is he saying? We all have one flesh. When you dream, who do you see? Is it this your body that you see in different countries? No. They are different bodies. So there are different yeah. dimensions. They just pick one aspect of you to say, oh, this is what he's coming to do. He also forgot that in the same Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, there's something God said about Jesus. He said, a son uh, will be born. Um, a, a child will be born, a, a son is given, yeah. and the government shall be on his shoulder. Okay. He shall be the prince of peace, faithful father, everlasting father, marvelous. You see the names he was given there. Yes. They was not given as a prophet. That same Isaiah, when you read downwards, he said um, um, uh, in Isaiah and also in Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew chapter 1, from verse 18 downwards, he said his name shall be called Emmanuel. So a desire will be born, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. But do you know, in the lifetime of Jesus, there was no way he was called Emmanuel. Yes. But the, the prophecy came that his name will be called Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. What's the meaning of Emmanuel? God, God with us. That is another God. dimension. But he was never called Emmanuel. Meaning, that aspect of Emmanuel was, he's, he's coming to be a God among his mm -hmm. people, yes. not a prophet now. So when you are dealing with the Bible, you must always blend the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because the New, Test the New Testament is the same word as the New Covenant. It's yes. the fulfillment of okay. the law. Yes. The law is a shadow of what is to happen. Moses was in the, in, in, in the, in the shadow of what should happen. That's why Jesus said, even Abraham desired, the prophet desired to see my days. He said, but Abraham saw it and it was glad. Yes. But others didn't see it. So we are fulfilling the law, amending the law. Are you getting it? So when you are coming with statements of uh, there is not the word of God, you should know what you are talking about. In Christianity, there is one thing we believe. We don't believe in theories. We don't believe in to read more books. At the point we said it, we said it, they, 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 are they come to you with, with men's wisdom. That's First Corinthians, uh, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. He said, but I came with a demonstration of power from the Spirit of God. Yes. So when you have the Spirit of God, all these little, little arguments, you put them to an end. If Jesus be, 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 be God, get this thing to be. Christendom is power. Not talking about this, this bringing theory, bringing, bringing history. Now, he made another statement that uh, in, in, in the Bible, the words of God, the words of prophets, and the words of, uh, of, of Paul, they, they, they made them into one volume. Forgetting that the prophet were not speaking on their own. They were speaking according to the influence of the Holy Ghost in them. Yes. For example, can I separate the spirit from you? Yes. When you speak, is it not both you and the spirit that speaks? So you should learn how to blend things together. That's just for example, yesterday I told you uh, I'm coming to visit you. Then you come into that and say, ah, it's my spirit that told you that. It's not me. My spirit will come. So that is some logical. Why? Because you and your spirit, you are one. Yes. That's why he said, I am my father. We are one. But he um, made mention of um, the pornography in the Bible. <laughs> he was talking about the uh, the the, 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 the epistle, not the pornography. You're talking about. He's talking about the pornography. That's talking about the epistle of Paul. We have the historian part. We have the words of, of God. We have the gospel uh, uh, part, and we have the uh, Pauline es uh, epistle. That's what he was talking about. That police was talking about the ways of Paul, the 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 uh, the, 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 the the books Paul wrote to the church in Corinthians, in Rome, in Galatians, in Thessalonica. Those are what he was talking about. But even that there are still pornography. There was there was pornography in the Bible. I feel what he's trying to talk about is Sodom and Gomorrah, and he is still in that I feel Sodom and Gomorrah actually tells a story afterwards. Sodom and Gomorrah. Is uh, a nation that was not with God, that was not doing the biddings of God. They were just humans on earth. In those days, you understand that God is the same yesterday, is the same today, 
is the same forever. Yeah. But there's different operation. Yeah. Same spirit, different operation. In uh, in the Old Testament, God spoke. In the New Testament, he is still speaking. But the operation of uh, the operation or the mode of, of his speaking is different. In those days, he spoke through his prophet, which is normal. Yeah. But in this days, he's speaking through our spirit. Yeah. So you should know the, the mode of operation. No, Sodom and Gomorrah was a nation actually that was given to different atrocities. There are some things I can't say now because they are really heavy. I'm even writing a book on that. The Babylonian Christian. It's very heavy. It's not for children. If you are not grounded in the word of God, you can't, you won't understand a lot of things. Sodom and Gomorrah was not uh, a nation that just started on its own. If you read in Genesis chapter 6, we were told about Nephilims. Uh, that's the, 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 the falling ones. Angels that left their, their, their yeah. place of assignment and they came to inhabit the earth and slept with daughters of men. No. The Nephilims are the product of the falling angels. The fallen angels, they are not on earth. After they did what they did, the Bible said God took them because they were more powerful than Satan himself. Hmm. So there are some things I can't relate, I can't bring up because of the, the, the nature of people I'm dealing with now. They are mixture of people, they are the, the babies, they are the adults, and those they are the elderly. So I'm trying to merge this in so that everybody can pick their part and understand well. The Nephilim are the products, I mean the children of the angels that slept hmm. with human. So when God saw what the angels did, God had to bind them and put them in uppermost uh, 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 darkness. See, do it. They are in chains. Okay. So people say, how can you prove that? Where were they reading? You can go uh, and, and study Jude. We only have one chapter in Jude. From chapter 6, he told us they were kept in total darkness until the end of days they will be dealt with. These angels are angels that excel in strength. That would, uh, that would call them the sons of God. Now, in the angelic, in the heavenly beings, they are different ranking. Yeah. So the source of God is another ranking in, uh, in the angels of God. It's, it, it was not talking about human beings. It's a ranking. Just we have watchers. Watchers are, are ranking. They are, they are kind of angels. But we don't call them angels. According to the ranking, they are called watchers. We also have another one called custodians. So we have different ranking. So there are this other ranking that are called sons of God. They are, they are terrible. By the grace of God, I uh, uh, I have I, I have met some things in the spirit by the spirit of God. I have I have been totaled. To an extent, I've I've learned some things that uh, we can't really see. You know, Apostle Paul said in Second Corinthians chapter twelve, he said, I, "I met a man in the spirit that have entered the third devil, and there are some things that is not permitted for him to see. Yes. But the things be permitted for me to see." <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You made mention of the third heaven. Yeah. Wait, are you trying to tell me that there are actually seven heavens? <sighs> I don't want to go too deep, but there are different heavens. Damn. You I... count your seven heavens, actually. Let me go straight. Yes. Okay. We're going to make a video after this, and it's actually talking about the seven heavens. So, yeah. we'll continue there, guys. Be sure to like, share, subscribe <laughs> to our channel. Tell us what you feel about this video, guys. We'll see you next time, guys. Cheers.